Hey guys, what's up? We're back again, and today we're going to be creating a barcode generator app. So in one of, my, one of my previous videos, we created a barcode scanning app where you could scan barcodes with your Power App. But now we're going to be creating an app where you can generate barcodes inside the app so you can show someone or something to scan it with. That's going to be really cool, so I'm going to show you how to do that today. Just a quick note before, connect with me on LinkedIn uh, in the description below. That'd be really helpful to me. I love connecting with you guys. I know we're like all internet strangers, but you know, it'd be be great to have more connections on LinkedIn and then also it would be great if you could share this video like it and also subscribe to me that would mean the world you don't have to do anything else just those two things would be great um, it's good for the YouTube algorithm so the YouTube starts recommending my videos and you know I, I like people watching my videos but that's great too so let's go ahead and get started to make the video short and let's go Okay, so here we are in our Power Apps, and also the service we're going to be using here is barcodes4.me. Now, one thing about this service, let's check out the pricing. Free, non-commercial use, free for commercial use also. That's really great because you don't have to pay a dime for this. It's really great. I am not a sponsor for this company or anything because, I mean, come on, they're providing this service for free. Thank you so much, The Refinery. And um, one thing to note, to use this service, you do need to give proper attribution right here for non-commercial and commercial use. So it's free, so we can just give them the credit, guys. Come on. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be showing you how to do this, though. So let's go to the API documentation, and then we can add the attribution later. So the thing with the API documentation is basically we're generating barcodes by just using the URL. And we know from our last video, if we just use the URL, we can also inc uh, insert some Power Apps elements in there, too. So you can use all these different codes, and then you, know, you can also make it inside your power apps where you switch between whatever codes you want to generate maybe saying using a drop down or something and then inserting it into that type right there but today i'm just going to be using the c128b showing you guys the concept and then you guys can go out and do whatever you want with it so just how it actually works is the url format is here you just type in this url and then once you get to type here you just type in the types that you want and these are the available types by the way you type in the types that you want and then the value of whatever you're doing so this can be like you know hi my name is henry or something and then you scan it and hi my name is henry will literally appear in the barcode and then dot image type which is just png gif uh, jpg whatever you want right and then you also have some additional options you can add at the end of this string um, this url code right here and it'll do that uh, as well so i'm gonna be sh i'll show you guys how to do that also because that's kind of important if you want a good resolution or you want to change the height of it or you want to change the margin reverse the colors of the barcode whatever and then we also have the qr codes right here so this is actually a really easy thing to do and i'm going to show you right now so let's go ahead and copy one of these samples and then we'll edit it in power apps so the first thing we want to do once we're in power apps is we just go to text and we input the html text and this is basically where we're going to be generating our barcode. And you can have the rest of the app uh, linked to this also, but I'll show you that in a second. Let's go ahead and edit it so we can see a barcode that we want. So the HTML text is going to be located within these quotation marks right here. So let's go ahead and post our link. So we can see the link is posted there, but since this is a, P this is a link to a PNG image, so if we open a new, new tab, we go to it, it's literally just an image that shows. So if we right click, we can open image in a new tab. It's a direct link to it. So what we want to do is basically just display it in HTML text format. So we just put image. So we have this, um, this mark right here. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> you put image, source, and then equal. And then we're going to use apostrophe there. Um, usually some pe most people use quotation marks, but since that's indicating the end of our HTML text, we're just going to use uh, an apostrophe apostrophe and then we just close that bracket boom there you go there's the barcode you can see the barcode instantly and then we're not going to be using c uh, whoops we're not going to be using c39 we're going to use c128b right there so that's the barcode we're going to use and the again these are the available formats and the codes right there so if we want to use i2 of 5 that's what we type in right there and then one thing again we can uh put the actual quotation mark there and then we can say and and then we can actually link this to for example a text input one so let's put in a text input there so this is text input two because I already have other text inputs in my power app but we can link this value right here 
to text input two actually. So oop, I'll just type it in. Text input two right there dot text, and then we can put and, and then we can start our quotation mark again, and then we can do the rest of the link. So that's really cool because now, let's see here, we just go to play, and then we type in the correct one that we want, which is going to be C one twenty eight B, and the barcode appears right there. So basically, what this is saying is we're having the image, and this is the source. It's this, and then we have the type, which is going to be right here. But we're using that as a text input to dot text right there. So um, someone can type in whatever type they want, and that's going to appear like that. So one thing I recommend doing is using a drop down and not like not like a text input here. But you know, you know, you guys can do that. The, the point of this video is to show you how to generate that barcode. So one more thing, we're going to have a slash right there. And then we want to change. So this is the value of the barcode. So if we remove that slash, oops, if we remove that slash, this barcode literally says if we scan this barcode right here, it's going to say any value you wish. That's that's what the barcode is going to say. So we're going to end that slash right there. And then we're going to go back and we're going to throw in another text input. And this text input is going to be what the person wants the barcode to say. So let's put this over there. That's the type of barcode. And then this, this one's going to be what they want the barcode to say. So let's add that in. This is going to be text input three dot text. And then add another ampersand right there. Start up our quotation mark again. Whoops. Start up a quotation mark again, and then now we can remove this because that's the value, and then we can actually also do the PNG one. Okay, well let's let's test this out first. So now let's click play. So our type of barcode is C128B, and then we want our text input. Okay, so we have text input in there. This barcode says text input, but um, let's change it. it. It changes as you type. Isn't that so cool? So that's my name, Henry Wong elinkin.com that's my website visit it but isn't that so cool it changes as you type elinkin.com henry wong i wonder if it's different if you type in capital g or something i'm sure barcodes um they can sense the capitalization also i think some types can sense the capitalization i'm not particularly sure if the c128b barcode can sense um, if it's capitalized or lowercase back to the subject, this is how you generate that barcode. So that's really cool. This is our value. So let's just give our person our people who are using the application, let them know what this is. So this is value. So that's going to be the value of the barcode. And then we're also going to want, oops, the type. So let's tell them that this is the type. So now we can change this up. This is the type of barcode and then value. This is our current code that we have. And let's give it so that they can change the type of barcode too. So I mean, the type of image that we want. I don't know why you would want that, but you can actually just change that too, just to let you know. So now that we're outside of it, let's go ahead and put another text input in. I'm only using text inputs to simplify it, but you guys should be using like drop downs or something. Okay, so our text input is there, and it's is going to be uh, this is going to be text input four dot text, and then we're going to put an and, and then we're going to start the quotation mark up again. So let's type in PNG here. Oops, something's not working. Let's check it out. And dot okay, it's because it's PNG twice. So this says PNG, and then this says PNG also. What we want is just that mark right there. So basically, we're just sectionalizing the URL of this API key from by using the URL pretty much. So um, we're sectionalizing this, this is the type, this is the value of what we want it to say. So Henry Wong. So if we scan this barcode, it says Henry Wong, this is the value. And then this is the type of image. So we can change this to JPEG, for example. So let's just change it to JPG still works, looks good. Okay, yeah, and that's pretty much how you generate a barcode inside of Power Apps. Now, one more thing to give you guys a little bit of insight into this extra additional options. Basically, if you put this 
at the end of a URL, it's going to change the properties of your barcode. So I copied that and let's go here. So the end of our URL is going to be right here. So this is dot PNG and that's the end of our URL. We're done, right? But let's say we wanted to add additional stuff. So we're going to add, so I'll just do this right here just for you guys to see. So this is the any value you wish. Let's change this to 128B, right? So this is our barcode pretty much. And then if we put the question mark height equals 200 right there, right? So it's just our link. There it is, the URL. And then we have the question mark height equals 200. It's going to change the height of this barcode to 200 pixels. There it is. And we can change it to 600 pixels and it's going to become 600 pixels. We can change it to 1600 pixels right there. But yeah, you can see what how that kind of works now. So let's change it back to 200 because it's a little, more, a little bit more visible. Now, if you want to add more than one parameter, you don't. So let's say we also want the resolution. So if I paste it right here, it's not going to work. If I press enter, it's still going to show the exact same image. So I'm pressing enter. It shows the exact same image. And the reason is because we have two question marks here. These question marks are basically separators for what, what um, features we want. Um, in addition to the URL that we connected to, right? So this first question mark is just the separator. Okay, the net, everything it says everything after this is the features, right? And then we have another question mark, and it doesn't really register that, so it's kind of like, and eh, whatever. But what you want to do is actually add an ampersand instead of a question mark. So we have the question mark height equals 200, and then we want to say, and the resolution is two. So I'm going to press enter. And there it is, the resolution changed. And for this one, you can go up to a resolution of four, I believe. So this can be really clear. And then let's say we want to add one more thing. Um, I don't know. Reverse color, sure. So let's add the reverse color. Again, change the question mark to an ampersand symbol. And then the one indicates true, right? And then zero is false. So. I do want to reverse the colors and you can see, so my mouse is on the black part right here and then I press enter. Now that part is white because the colors are reversed. Let's change it back to zero. So now we don't want the colors to be reversed. I'm going to be on the white part and change back to black. So basically that's how you do it guys. We just put the ampersand symbol instead of a question mark after the first question mark. So we can go back to our application and then we can add those extra parameters that we want here. So we put height, question mark height is equal to so now we can decide what we want the height to be let's say 300 pixels so you can see our barcode is now really long and then we want to say and um, let's say is reverse what is it color is reverse color yep is reverse color and I want that to be equal to true so you can see the black part here is going to change white okay I guess you can't really see it but it changed. <laughs> so let's let's do one more just for visibility. Let's do resolution is equal to four. So make it really clear. There it is. So I can change it to three, two, one, two, three, four, right? Equals four. Yeah, so you can you can play around with these power up and then you know make the height two hundred. Boom, there we go. And then you can also actually, you know, do the parameter inside the parameter. So we have the height is equal to, so let's say you want the user to decide what the height they want to be. So let's add that in right here. Let's do another text input. And I recommend changing this one to um, just numbers. So we kind of have to, we're kind of messy here, but this is the height, right? This is the height. Uh, text input five is the height. Let me just change it to height. Okay, so it's called height now. So now we can go there and then type in height.text. Let's do an ampersand symbol and another ampersand symbol. So now we, the user can decide what they want the height to be. So let's go ahead and test that out by clicking the play button here. And then let's change the height to 200. We can change the height to 200. Now let's change it to 300, 400, 500. So if we change it to 500, like, you know, the image is too big. Maybe you don't want the user to do that. But now the user's in control. They can change the height of the barcode, but it's still exactly the same barcode. That's pretty cool. So I only showed you guys to do that, how to do that with the height, but you can change that however you'd like also. So I hope you guys understand how to generate a barcode now with the properties that they want also, and then let the Power Apps users control what they want the barcode to say. So cool guys. Thank you so much to Barcodes For Me. I am not a sponsor for Barcodes For Me, but 
thank you so much for the service guys so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something new today hopefully it's really helpful for you if it really helped you please 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 hit that like button and subscribe to me would mean the world thank you so much and have a great day guys bye